thank you so much, President Cruzado, and thank all of you for this incredible honor that the state of and land I love, the city that's been my family's home for the last 11 years, and the magnificent university that I've adopted as my own should single me out in this way really leaves me stunned. Um, part of me asked, who did I fool? <laughs> the other me sounds a cautionary note. What a time to have the attention of so many. About eight months ago, I was asked to screen our recent film, Warlords of Ivory, in northern Kenya. This was no fancy screening room with plush seats. Uh, it was an open-air hangar, aircraft hangar, on a wild plane. The time, sunset. The audience, mostly Samburu wildlife rangers who spend their years in the field, tracking down poachers to save elephants, rhino, and just about everything else that I consider precious in the wild of Africa. The film ends, a torch illuminates the gathered team all in green camo, Enfield rifles stacked against a plane, their body language agitated. They need to talk. And so I make my way to the back of the hangar. These towering men want to know about the terrorist, Joseph Coney, featured in the film. Even though his dark world is a thousand miles away, they already know much. We then riff on world events, some in my country, others in Russia and Turkey. Geopolitics seems to be in their blood, and they hunger for more. While they own cell phones, they have little access to a website. Their wisdom is acquired the old-fashioned way. Campfire conversation, secondhand newspapers, lively debate, and irrepressible curiosity. No leaf seems to fall in Washington or Moscow that does not appear to fall on them in Kenya. They are citizens of the world. Now, I'm going to return to them, but first let me tell you that I may be the luckiest man you will ever meet. For five decades, no kidding, I have been able to follow my childhood dream, adventuring far, returning home with piles of notebooks, reams of film, and a story. I've always been drawn to oversized personalities, remote landscapes, and secrets worth revealing. I trained under the masters, and I learned to distinguish real from counterfeit, story from fable. Recently, I found myself in ungoverned lands, rubbing shoulders with heroes and monsters alike, trying to shed like light where there's little, and then distilling notes into a narrative that reflects what's going on. Which brings me to my great concern, the truth. Now, maybe you understood it. Maybe, like me, you are perplexed by its modern variants, when all your life you believed truth had only one meaning. What about that recent adaptation, post-truth, the Oxford Dictionary 2016 Word of the Year? Quote, relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. So that means that science, scholarship, and history can now be tossed onto the trash heap of expediency and swapped with fantasy, make-believe. So let's call post-truth for what it is, a lie. What makes deceit different today is our sudden credulousness, the absence of self-examination, a desire to suspend critical thinking and to cast opinions as facts. While the greats like Walter Cronkite, 
fade from our midst and foreign bureaus cease to exist, the truth has become increasingly ephemeral, dull stuff against the luster of concocted headlines. Pope Francis shocks world, endorses Donald Trump for president. Hillary runs a pedophile ring out of a pizza parlor. Now, what might have been funny last year is now, according to one poll, what 75% of Americans believe it's a God's honest truth. So, I look to you, the great class of 2016, to save us. It won't be the first time someone of my generation has said, we screwed up, now you put it right. But are you listening? What are you doing? So far, I have a few concerns. Many millennials nationwide did not vote in November. Was it apathy, ignorance, or indifference? Please, not you. With your understanding, outstanding education, excuses ring hollow. You who know how to sleuth out the truth must not shy from it. You will find you are never done with exams. Life is an exam and never multiple choice. At best, life is an essay of the heart forged from truth with one tough examiner. You. You pass only if you stay current, engaged, informed. You must read, write, debate, question, challenge idiocy, and take chances. If, as Shakespeare wrote, action is eloquence, then your life can become a masterpiece. So back to that dark, windy plain in Kenya. What was it that left me forgive me, gobsmacked by that band of Samburu Rangers. I've spent years with great men like them, and I have nothing but admiration for the way they can laugh off the daily brush with death. But tonight, what added to my adm admiration was the way they had slipped the bonds of computers and fallen back on their minds, asking questions, working out answers, seeking the best the best truth available, miles from anywhere with not a router in sight. True citizens of the world, you can be the same, and now you must. One evening years ago, the poet W.H. Auden sat in a dive on New York's West 52nd Street and wrote, Defenseless under the night, our world in stupor lies, yet dotted everywhere, ironic points of light flash out wherever the just exchange their messages. May I, composed like them, of eros and of dust, beleaguered by the same negation and despair, show an affirming light. The poem is called September 1st, 1939. And oh, by the way, on that very day, Nazi Germany invaded Poland and began World War II. Today, while war may not be in the wind, there is no more critical time to hold to the truth. Congratulations. And thank you very much.